Hello, my name is Rachel White and I am a JFK assassination researcher. Today I'd like to talk to you about Ruth Payne. Now I don't know if you're familiar with Ruth Payne uh, but just to recap on some of the things we talked about in our earlier videos. She is the lady who Marina Oswald went to live with from the 23rd of September 1963 at her house in Irving. Marina and Ruth uh, were young mothers together and they took care of their young, young children and they had an arrangement whereby Ruth Payne would look after Marina, give her free room, board, food, transportation, anything she needed, medical bills, pregnancy care. Remember Marina was uh, pregnant in 1963 and actually gave birth to a baby two weeks just before the assassination. So all of her medical bills and everything associated with everything she needed was financed and funded by Ruth Payne. Now we need to ask ourselves a very important question here because Marina had a husband, Lee Harvey Oswald. So yes, it was difficult I guess, for him to find work. But why would a woman step in and take that level of care to a Russian emigre young mother? What motivates the heart so much to, to do that and effectively split up a family? Um, so, Marina and, and Ruth and June who was Marina's oldest child, roughly about two years old, live in Irving together. Lee is visiting at the weekend, many weekends. So we need to ask ourselves how that actually came about, some of the background to that situation. In our research, we found out that actually Marina and Ruth started corresponding in Russian. Remember that Marina could only speak and write in Russian. And Ruth was a Russian teacher, so she was very proficient in communicating in the Russian language. So they start to communicate from around about February 1963. I believe they knew each other prior to that, but from, certainly from the February uh, of that year, they they began corresponding and they began to talk to each other and the arrangement was made quite early on that Ruth would uh, pick up um, Marina and, and care for her needs. In fact, uh, when Marina and Lee uh, moved from Dallas into New Orleans, uh, Ruth was actually present helping them move into the New Orleans house. And then when they left New Orleans on September the 23rd, Ruth Payne was instrumental in helping them move out. So that tells us a lot. That tells us about their association going back quite a way. And it tells us that the arrangement that was made goes stretches back quite a way. And it tells us also that if it's an arrangement that Lee's clandestine activities during the summer of 1963 are all planned out, all organised, and somebody somewhere is making arrangements for the wife to be out of the way, almost, whilst he gets on with something very, very important CIA business. So that's the first thing I wanted to kind of uh, ground us in, in understanding that that, that has come about. So we're going to skip forward now to the events of the assassination. And we already talked about uh, Ruth Payne going in the garage on the night before the assassination, on the Thursday the 21st. We talked about that and we talked about her uh, getting irritated because she believed that Lee had been in the garage and left the light on. So if you haven't seen me talk about that, then skip back to my earlier videos and, and catch up because that's a really important point. What we have to realise is that Ruth Payne wanted uh, us to believe, that, to the Warren Commission to believe, to, for everybody to believe that uh, Lee was in that garage and that he was going to be the one who was going to be seen taking a weapon out of the garage and therefore shooting the president with it. So everything that she does 
points us in the direction of believing that that's true. And I do mean everything that she does. Um, and everything that she does that's documented in her Warren Commission testimony certainly points to that fact. And in fact, Michael as well, her husband as well. So on the morning of the 22nd of November 1963, Ruth tells us that she did not notice Lee Harvey Oswald leaving the property. And there is good reason for that because we believe that he actually left the night before. So she was up fairly early, but she recalls that she did not see him leave. Okay, so we need to think about what she did during that morning, that Friday morning. It's on the record that she visited a dentist. Now let's just put two and two together here using our, our kind of logic. If Ruth Payne is going to her regular dentist with one of her children, she is going to go to the same dentist time and time and time again. If she is also tasked with providing Marina's medical bills and sorting out all of med medical issues and health issues for Marina and June, she's going to recommend that Marina uses the same practitioners. That's the reason, isn't it? We found out through our research that Marina had very bad teeth. She was an expectant mother. She probably, almost certainly, uh, went and got some dental work at at least a discounted rate. It, it didn't really matter. Ruth Payne was paying for it anyway. And her dentist was actually based at Baylor Clinic. Now, that's really, really important because it's fair to say that that is the exact same dentist clinic that Ruth Payne also used. You would recommend that you use your same dentist, wouldn't you, to somebody? I, I think that's a very high chance that you would do that. So we're told that uh, Ruth Payne, on the morning of the assassination, went to her dentist, probably with one of her children. Now, the interesting thing about Baylor Dentist Clinic is that it's on the Baylor University Hospital campus. And so... It's very, very likely, therefore, that actually, yes, she may well have gone to the dentist, she may have scheduled it exactly then, but whilst she was about that business, she popped along to meet her handler at Baylor Hospital. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because we've touched base with a guy called Rod McKenzie, who was the safe house manager for the Holland Avenue Safe House, and he gives an account that on that same day he met with his handler at Baylor Clinic. Rod McKenzie was also a scrub nurse and so what they planned out was that when uh, JFK was going to be shot that the um, the motorcade would actually come and deliver uh, JFK, the dying president, the dead president, to Baylor Hospital. That was the original plan. In fact, they made a mistake and they went to Parkland instead. They just drove on and, and assumed that it would be the nearest and uh, quickest to get to, I, I, sus I suspect. But the plan was, or at least the backup plan was, that he was going to be taken to Baylor. So we have John Roselli meeting with the Holland Avenue safe house manager and another guy who was a, 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 an asset called Jake Miranda at Baylor Hospital at that time, at lunchtime. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility to suggest that Ruth Payne also paid a visit to Baylor Clinic Hospital to meet with John Roselli, her handler, at that same point or just ahead of Rod McKenzie. Now, the reason that I think that is because we've stumbled across the operational name for the Safe House project, and it's called ZR Flat Store. And it looks very likely that uh, this flat store project was managed by John Rosalie, who was a mafia don, mafia bod, and he was tasked with assigning managers to the Safe House. And it looks as though that the Dallas end was managed by Rod McKenzie, overseen by um, by Roselli, and also that Marina was in her own kind of safe house under Ruth Payne. Ruth Payne, we, we talked about this a little bit before, didn't we, about how she was only a Russian 
speaking housewife. She had no income. The husband and her had uh, separated instantly. They got back together briefly after the assassination, which is interesting in itself. Um, but uh, they lived apart during the assassination time. And I can't quite work out how she funded herself because uh, Michael was living in a, his own apartment so unless he was earning huge amounts of money to sustain his own apartment, his own vehicle, his own children and there she is, Ruth Payne, giving all of these things to Marina out of the goodness of her, her Quaker heart. Um, I just don't know how she would afford that, just being a housewife, just teaching a little bit of Russian. It doesn't, the figures don't add up, do they? <laughs> it just doesn't seem to work, uh, in my mind anyway. So what I think is was that she was uh, actually being paid. She was being paid by the CIA, CIA and she was being paid in per mindex vouchers which could be cashed and basically they operated a little bit like a check you got paid uh, the check amount or the, the per mindex voucher amount and you took it to a place that would accept it and you swapped it for cash and that business would then uh, return that voucher for its own cash so these businesses are all roped in through this system of Permindex vouchers now what's interesting about Permindex is that it is a company and when you and you look at this in a little bit more depth you understand that Clay Shaw we mentioned him before was a big name in this company a big name a big major player sat on the board of directors sat on the board of directors for the trademark and actually uh, was one of the original founding uh, members board of directors for the World Trade Center. So we can see that we've got loads of connections. This guy, Clay Shaw, was a major player. And as we discussed before, the car, the light green station wagon, uh, Rambler, was actually uh, given to Ruth Payne to give to the Oswalds via Clay Shaw. So we can see this chain now. Of, of money and funding and finances and where it comes from and it, we're building a picture now that this lady Ruth Hyde Payne is connected in she's connected in she has to be absolutely has to be she's not just an ordinary housewife I mean I'm an ordinary housewife I wouldn't know how to do all these things how would you access this kind of thing you have to have the connections to be able to do that so that's really what I wanted to share in this video and I will be back with more about Ruth Payne